Hello, party people, and welcome to another episode of Office Hours. Today, I am outside the restaurant Fjorobordid in Stocksery, Iceland, uh, supposedly home of some of the best uh, langoustine soup out there in Iceland. And I, I think it's pretty good. I don't know that it's the very best, but it's pretty doggone good. Um, it's about 10 minutes until they open. I got here a little bit early today, so we'll go ahead and record a quick set of uh, questions for y'all. So the first question is from Peter Hansen. What are your opinions about the sequel generated by Entity Framework? Assuming that the relevant tables are properly indexed, is the Entity Framework SQL satisfactory? And then he's got another part, but I'm going to answer that part first. So, and I've said this a lot on, on uh, webcasts when people ask me to bash Entity Framework or other, any ORM really. The SQL that's produced by Entity Framework or Dapper or NHibernate or whatever is better than the SQL that an untrained developer produces. If someone who has no training whatsoever sits down and starts writing T-SQL, their T-SQL is going to be terrible. Similarly, if they sit down and start using Entity Framework, Entity Framework is going to produce better SQL than what they would produce themselves. So I am fine uh, with the T-SQL generated by those tools because most people out there just don't get enough training to write great database queries. Now the second part of his query says, well, hello, Elgato. Hello. Hi. How you doing? You want to say hi? Hello. Oh, you're adorable. Yes, you are. He's got other things he wants to do, though. Um, oh, I don't think I have face tracking on. Let me tr turn that on. So there, that's on. It doesn't... Is it following me? No, it's not following me. You can't see the gato. Oh, man. Okay, well, it is what it is. Uh, the second part of Peter's question was, are there any thresholds where you would ditch the generated SQL and opt for a stored procedure? Yeah, when you can't get the performance that you want from Entity Framework, Dapper, and Hibernate, whatever, um, and every millisecond counts, that's where a stored procedure starts to make sense. But I would by far and away ship Entity Framework, ship Dapper, ship uh, and Hibernate, whatever, because uh, most of the time queries don't get called often enough to really make the difference that's worth uh, hand coding T-SQL in stored procedures. Plus, too, it's not like every stored procedure is fast. I mean, I, I get called in to tune things that are just as often stored procedures as they are in the framework. So there we go. Uh, next up we have... Uh, always learning DBA. Always learning DBA says, Hello, Brent. A friend of mine wants to transition from a production DBA role to an architect or data science role. What free resources do you recommend to transition into those roles? Okay, so for data science, uh, it starts with every data science vendor is trying to get their products out there and kind of sell them. So look at the vendors. So for example, Microsoft's BI stack, Microsoft's data science stack is very much about uh, trying to, to evangelize their own products. So they put together all kinds of free training out there. Uh, just search for Microsoft uh, uh, data scientist training uh, out there, especially on GitHub, because they put a lot of their code out on GitHub, lessons, things like that. Um, uh, there are tons of online academies, Khan Academy, tons of free online stuff, even search just for YouTube. Um, the thing that I would say, though, is the free training isn't going to be the thing that gets you the job by itself. You're going to need to actually get the job, which is going to involve having recommendations from your coworkers, knowing people who've moved on to other companies. So I always think of career progression as like the buddy system. You want to know everyone you work with who's gone on to other companies, and they're really your foot in the door, so that when their companies are hiring for a data scientist or an architect or whatever, you can tell your network and say, hey, just in case you find anything that where people are hiring for an architect or data scientist, this is the role that I'm interested in. And since they already know you and trust the work that you do, you'll have a much higher life likelihood to succeed. And then the third question that we'll take will be, the next one up, Ian says, how would the monitoring strategy for uh, be different for SQL Server on hardware, on Azure Infrastructure as a Service, on Linux containers, Azure SQL uh, uh, Platform as a Service? How would the monitoring strategy be different? 
the, so the monitoring strategy, if you're talking about, once you start going to the cloud especially, uh, companies are usually looking to cut costs. So they tend to pick one platform for monitoring that monitors as much as possible at the lowest cost possible. Sometimes they'll look at open source solutions, they'll look at Grafana, they'll look at trying to find anything that they can cobble together. Things built into Azure or built into Amazon or Google, because those providers have all kinds of monitoring tools built into like pay as you go type stuff. Um, so the thing that I would look at is what is your company doing overall as a strategy? It's less about picking a monitoring tool directly for SQL Server, it's more about picking something across your entire cloud platform. And then he says, uh, it's a follow-up to a question that you answered with a George Clooney example. Okay, that's auditing, that's not monitoring, that's completely different. He says, is Azure SQL built-in auditing legally defensible? If not, what's your recommendation to audit Azure SQL? Always, always, always talk to security teams. Don't talk to the SQL Server team. Don't talk to SQL Server consultants. Go to your security team because if you need a legally defensible way of monitoring, it actually won't be coming from the database stack at all. It'll be coming from your, your security team, which really focuses on doing that kind of auditing without having the data professionals involved at all. All right, so there's three quick questions from the edge of the ocean here. Woo! Oh, man, goodness, I turn around and I forget that there's some strong wind going on inside there. So uh, the restaurant's just about to open up. I'm going to go down and get me some of these uh, langoustines. So I will see y'all later. Adios.